biggest mistake the average guy makes when he meets an attractive woman or a woman that he thinks, wow, this, this girl is my type. I, you know, she could be somebody I would want to have a relationship with. The biggest mistake he makes is this. He tries to present himself as a potential boyfriend. Okay. Very counterintuitive. When the average guy sees a woman that he's attracted to, he goes into boyfriend mode. Like I'm going to show her that I'm this good guy. I'm this nice guy. I have a lot in common with her. We get along well. We, we like all the same things. I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to be very attentive to her and I'm going to, and what happens when you go into potential boyfriend mode is you turn into the average nice guy because you're doing what every other guy does. You're kissing her butt. You're complimenting her. You're, you're faking that you have interest in things that you don't really have interest in. Your real personality is not coming through because you're going into this mode of, I need to show her that I would make a good boyfriend. And when that happens, you generally wind up here in the nice guy zone. Sometimes you wind up here in the friend zone but you never actually wind up here as a boyfriend or here as a potential lover. I recently came across one of the best nuggets of dating advice I had ever read, ever, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. It's from a private Facebook group that I'm in, so I'm gonna keep the author anonymous, but what she said really resonated with me and validated kind of my current approach to dating that I had been doubting a little bit recently. I also think this advice could apply to a lot of other things outside of dating and outside of dating for women, probably to anyone in their 20s too. Um, so I just wanted to read it to you guys. The question is, women in their 40s and 50s, what's the biggest piece of dating advice you can give to women in their 20s? Stop trying to date to get married. Date to have fun. Date to get to know someone. But most of all, date to get to know yourself. Create a big life for yourself. Go to therapy. Heal your childhood wounds. Have lovers. Explore your sexuality. Focus on adding pleasure into your life and love into your heart without desperately seeking for a partner to complete you. No one else is going to complete you. You complete yourself. You are whole all by yourself. So love yourself. Love yourself so much you know your boundaries. Love yourself so much that you don't internalize other people's behavior and make it about you. It's not. It's about them. Heal your wounds. Marriage and kids is one way to add love and joy into your life, but it is by no means the best way or the only way. Stop trying to lock it down within two months or even six. Life is long. Enjoy it. Meet different people. Codependency isn't love. Integrity is. Love yourself and choose someone who also loves themselves. Stop trying to save or fix or convince someone else. You are divine energy and pure love. Focus on connecting to the parts of yourself you are embarrassed or ashamed about. Those places of you need your love much more than a borderline ugly guy who doesn't know how to do his laundry and is too lost to find his way without you turning into his mother. When people show you who they are, believe them. The more you overcompensate for someone else, the less energy you have for yourself. It's not their fault if you get lost in them, it's yours. Take responsibility and accountability for your own healing and you will live a life filled with joy, passion, and fulfillment. All I just wanna say is that I wish I had someone to tell me this years ago, years ago. Three girl tips I wish I would've knew sooner. If his idea of a first date is for you to come over to his house and chill, girl, dump him. I mean, come on. A walk in the park is free. Always ask him, is he looking to get into a relationship before getting really serious about him, okay? Because if he's not sure about what he wants. If he doesn't know the difference between there, there, and they are, dump his ass. Even if you don't know. Hell, y'all both can't be dumb. First date, don't. Just don't do this. Don't Just you don't. dare. Just don't even, don't even try. try. Number one, don't go to a movie. Going to a movie, you can't talk, you can't get to know each other. It's a horrible first date. It's just pointless. <laughs> Number two, don't get too touchy too fast. It just comes off wrong, and even if you're not a creeper, it kind of feels like that. Number three, don't talk about your ex. If you're directly asked, obviously be honest, but don't spend the date talking about that. 
number four. Don't rush into talking about the future. You can talk about where you see yourself going in the future. That's part of getting to know each other, but don't talk about a future together. That's like a lot. A for lot a first date. really soon on. Just mm -hmm. yeah. Number five, don't only talk about yourself, but also don't not talk about yourself. Yeah, it's a balance between asking questions and also answering. Yeah. Good luck! I think that people should date for the rest of their lives. When you try to win that person to be your spouse, look at how much you did. Make sure how you looked, how you acted, everything about you was, I want to win this person. Then you win that person, and then within a year or 10 years or 20 years, it all goes to hell. I stopped trying to win this person. My favorite English verb is earn. It's one of the only languages in the world that has the word earn. In all Latin languages, you say, I win an income. In America, in English, you say, I earn. This, the other one is my happiness thesis, that you are not allowed to inflict your bad mood on others any more than you can inflict your bad breath on others. You are obligated to wash away your bad mood just as you wash away your bad breath. Ladies, the time has come. This is day one of how to get a guy in 30 days. Today, we're gonna to be deep diving into how to get a guy's attention. So girls, listen up and boys, watch out for the signals. Unlike my previous videos, this one is a step-by-step -step guide. So girls, please get your notebooks at the ready. First thing you're gonna do is drop Q. What this means is dropping game, AKA a compliment, followed by a question. Why? Because guys don't get complimented nearly enough as they should, and it gives them something to reply to. So already with just this one step, you're miles above 99% of all women. Next up, you're gonna apply the hero effect, which is asking him for a favor or his opinion on something. Not only is this gonna make him feel special, it's gonna validate his ego and make him feel more masculine. Now that the conversation's flowing smoothly, you're gonna ask him what his favorite movie is and then proceed to tell him you've never watched it. If he's into you at this point, which odds are he will be, his response is gonna be like, oh my God, what? We have to watch it together. Now you've just secured yourself a date and he's gonna think it was all his idea, which we both know it wasn't. After the date's secured, you're gonna make sure you're the first person to say goodnight and add on, I'll speak to you tomorrow. This is gonna show him your intention to carry on the conversation tomorrow. It's on your terms and it's gonna leave him wanting more. Now, when the time comes and you do actually hang out in person, trust me on this one, make sure you wear the color red. Multiple scientific studies have shown that guys are more attracted to girls when they wear red. So if you wanna have the odds in your favor, if I was you, I'd test the theory. Now, as far as perfume goes, you're gonna to wanna to apply it to your neck and your wrists and your hair. Don't ask me why, but the scent lasts longer. And guys go crazy when a girl's hair smells nice. And going forwards, whenever they smell that scent, they're gonna subconsciously attach it to you. Now, if you wanna be sure he knows what the vibe is, you have got to come through with the triangle method. I swear by this. If there wasn't sexual tension before, there immediately is now. In fact, legend has it, the mysterious girl Peter Andre sang about also did this. Whenever there's a natural break in your conversation, just trust me, look into their right eye and then down at their lips and then up at their left eye. And if done correctly in that moment, he's definitely gonna know that you wanna kiss him. So just let me know when you need a godmother for that beautiful kid that you two are gonna make together. And if you need more tips like this, make sure you follow for day two. My first date rules that I think you should implement. Number one, never have them pick you up on a first date. Have you ever met somebody for the first time? They get out of the car, they don't get out of the car. It's so awkward. No, you wanna walk into the date, okay? Number two, be just a hair late. It's fucking stupid, but there's something about them being there and you walking in rather than you sitting there waiting for them, okay? Number three, dates only on weekend nights. I know how some of you feel about this. Thursday night's the best night. No, during the week, I have to get up early. I'm tired. I want to have time to like get ready and enjoy it. And this shows that this man does not go out with some motherfucking boys every Friday and Saturday night. If he's making time for you on a Friday or Saturday night, I feel like that's a good sign. Four, do not pen pal beforehand. You should know nothing about this man before going on the date. Okay. Okay. Number five, do not tell them your relationship expectations on the first date. I feel like people come in so hot and like, this is what I'm looking for. First of all, let them show you. Second of all, it's a first date. You're just getting to know them. Chill the fuck out. Number six, thank them during the date. Thank you so much for the drinks. Thank you so much for dinner. Great to meet you. Peace the fuck out. Okay, no text after, thank you. No.
No, you thank them in person. Number seven, if you're gonna go on a second date, wait a minimum of three days to go on the next date. Don't be too available, okay? Let it simmer, let it rest. What's the rush, okay? Like, sit on it, think about that first date because sometimes we're like all excited, like, chill out, you're gonna be fine. Number eight, do not be on your phone during this date. It's an hour, maybe two of your time. Don't be a shitty person, be present, put your fucking phone away. It's just disrespectful. I hate people who do this, do not. Nine, don't get drunk either, okay? If you're getting drinks, that's okay. You don't need to get hammered. Like, make this, be present again. Don't be a dumbass, okay? Number 10, go into the date expecting friendship. I go into every single date, well, I have a boyfriend now, but I used to, like, this guy seems cool, might make a friend out of this. I never went in like, this is gonna be the love of my life. I feel like you put so much expectations, you're nervous. Like you just need to go in with confidence and be like, okay, this is gonna be fun. Like I'm just meeting a new person and it can evolve from there. This like chill out, okay? And 11, have fun. It's a first date, it's supposed to be fucking fun. If you want someone to be attracted to you, there are some really specific psychological things you can do right now that can actually put the odds in your favor. As a relationship therapist with a doctoral degree in psychology, I have spent my life studying attraction and I have seen real life examples of these things actually working. First thing you're gonna do, this concept is a little bit trickier to master, but I swear if you can get it right, they are going to be so attracted to you. You are gonna do everything you can to let somebody else share your accomplishments with them. So for example, you are at a barbecue and you meet a guy that you think is really cute. You ask him what he does for a living and he says, oh, I'm a student. But then your friend comes up to you later and says, yeah, he's a PhD student at Harvard. His attractiveness meter just went off the charts because not only is he doing something amazing, but he was humble enough to not even bring it up when he talked to you. And seeing somebody else be wowed by him is gonna make him seem even more attractive in your eyes. So if you want someone to think you're super attractive, be really demure about your accomplishments in front of them and then let them find out how amazing you are from other people. You can even have a designated friend brag about you when you're not around. It really works. Next thing you're gonna do guys is use the concept of mystery to your advantage. From a psychological perspective, the more curiosity somebody has about you, the more they don't know about you, the more attractive you'll become in their eyes. This isn't to say that you never want them to get to know you. It's just for the early stages when you're developing that initial attraction. So promise me this, the next time you are in a texting conversation with them or in person, be the first one to peace out. Be like, I've got something to do and don't fulfill all of their curiosities about you. If they are left wanting more, they are going to find you more attractive. Finally guys, this is the kicker. To make them super attracted to you, you are gonna do everything in your power to make them feel attractive when they're around you. People feel more attracted to you when they themselves feel sexy and attractive in your presence. So don't be afraid to flirt. If you guys are new to flirting and want detailed tips on how to flirt, let me know here in the comments. Love Three girl tips I wish I would've knew sooner. If you notice you're always the one making plans or he always claims he's too busy to see you, dump him. Remember, people make time for who they want. Don't post him on social media yet so you guys make it official, just in case it doesn't work out. Trust me, it'll save you from the embarrassment. And if you notice it takes him two to three days to reply back to your text message, babe, he either has a girlfriend or he's not that into you. I'm just being honest. Ladies, when it comes to dating, never do more for a man than he does for you. Let the man initiate in every area. You should not be calling more than he call you. You should not be texting him more than he texts you. You should not be spending money on him more than he spends on you. You should not be spending more money on him than he spends on you. You should not be going all out your way more than he does for you. You should not be going to visit him more than he does for you. Do not do anything more than what he has done for you. And I know it's hard when you really like a man and you have such a big heart and you just love to give and all of that stuff. I get it. But you have to learn boundaries. The key is to let the man lead and you follow, right? Let him show you that he's invested. Let him show you that he's interested, right? You reciprocate and show appreciation for what he has already shown you. You as a woman don't do things and jump on the deep end and go all out first and then expect him to follow you with that. Let him lead. Be grateful, show appreciation, but reciprocate what he does. Don't lead. You let him lead and you follow.
Okay, honestly, the best dating advice I ever got came from a boomer who was telling me about how people before social media, before all the digital technologies that we are native on, how did they discern whether someone liked them or not? And she said, sure, like they would also be trying to read into what people said and their actions or whether they called them on the phone. But before all of this technology, people couldn't stay in constant communication. How you knew whether someone liked you was, are they spending time with you? Are they making plans to do stuff with you? Do they want to see you? Do they want to hang out? I know it might seem like a duh, like people need to spend time with one another, but like, I think that we lose that perspective sometimes. If someone's not texting you 24 seven, sure, that's data. But when I catch myself overthinking text exchanges, I think of the boomers. Five pieces of dating advice I wish everyone knew. One, if you have to question whether they like you, they probably don't. Stop choosing people who aren't choosing you back. Two, notice their patterns and believe their actions more than their words. If it's happened once, it's likely to happen again, so instead of being shocked by this repeated behaviour, try to listen to what it's telling you about them. Three, come in knowing exactly what you're looking for and be prepared to communicate that. This will help stop heartbreak later down the line when you realise that you're on completely different pages. Four, listen to your body when you're with that person. If it feels crazy and wild and intense, you might be feeling fear rather than real love. And five, present yourself authentically so the right person can find you. Oftentimes what this person is doing is stringing you to the f*** alone. They give you enough attention to keep you there, but not enough to make you feel like you really loved and valued, right? And that hot and cold nature, what did that do? It caused confusion in your heart because you don't know where a man stands. A man that really loves you will let you know where you stand in their life because they know confusion leads to heartbreak. And the last thing he wants to do is break the woman's heart in which he cares about. But when a man only cares about himself, this is what happened. When a man senses you pulling away, he's going to give you a little tidbit to keep you there, but not enough to actually show you he cares. He may go a certain amount of time without being respectful, without being available, without showing you he's ready to commit. And when you start to now say, all right, I'm about to go play the field again. I'm about to reopen my options. Now here comes that gesture. Now here comes that date. You know why a man does that? Cause he really don't want you for real. He wants the convenience of you. How he treats you is how he feels about you. Listen, guys are pretty simple. If he acts like he doesn't care, he doesn't care. So stop making excuses for him and move on.